Hello, and welcome to my sim racing VR settings guide. It's my first time doing this style of videos. I'm kind of out of my comfort zone, so excuse me if this isn't very enjoyable to watch. It is not my strength, but I felt this complete in-depth guide was necessary for the sim racing community. The reason I wanted to make this video is because I haven't really found a guide on YouTube which covers every single step to maximizing your PC performance for VR. We all know it can be a hassle to get those pesky 90fps, but it is possible through countless hours of exploring Reddit, Steam forums, Ray's department, searching for those tips and tricks, which I have already done myself and I'm making this video so you don't have to go through that. So, first things first, we're gonna look for our Steam VR. Uh, here it is. Uh, let's right click it, go into properties, and click on betas. Now, we're gonna select the Steam VR beta. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because the Steam VR beta actually gives you better performance in graphics. Uh, I don't know why, I just know it works. I have tested it and it it does work better with the SteamVR beta. So make sure you're running it. So next thing you're going to want to do is check your SteamVR settings. Which we're going to left click here, go to settings and into general. Uh, you're going to want to have motion smoothing on. It basically does what it says, it's smooth as motion, it doesn't have a big performance hit, it's worth it, it's like a 2 FPS drop, it's nothing. Uh, those 2 FPS we're gonna gain by some things we're gonna do later on in this video, you'll see. Um, the resolution pry, this is your super sampling. Um, I myself am running a Ryzen 5 and a 3GB 1060 and this is what I can run at decently. If you have a beefy computer, maybe you've got a 360 or something, you can turn this all the way up. Or if you're on an older system, it's gonna be half to turn down. Now this is exclusive for Windows Mixed Reality users. Um, if you're running on such, you're gonna have this tab on your Windows settings, which is pretty important. You're gonna wanna click into it, go to Headset Display, and this is the important setting you're gonna wanna select optimize for performance uh, this is gonna give you a little fps boost uh, you're not gonna notice any dip in quality but it does make it run smoother so make sure it's optimized for performance so your next stop is gonna be your sim of choice now I play Assetto Corsa mainly, and uh, this is Content Manager, it's a must have, and I'm gonna link it down in the description. Uh, now have in mind, these settings will always vary from system to system. No one's gonna have the same settings. It all depends on you, on your PC, on what you do in the sim, so keep that in mind. Now I use Assetto Corsa for league races and such. So these settings are optimized to give me the best performance and graphics for a full grid of cars. If you're hot lapping or playing with a few mates, you can have most of these turned a bit up. So the first thing you have to check is your rendering mode. Oculus Rift for obviously Oculus. And if you're on any other HMDs, you're gonna check OpenVR, which is for the Vive, WMR, etc. Uh, leave all of this default, you don't have to touch the resolution or anything. But make sure you have vertical sync off and you have a limit frame rate. Uh, you're gonna wanna limit your frame rate because you can only see 90 FPS on the HMDs. So there's no reason for your GPU to be working extra to give you 100 FPS if the maximum you can see is 90. So my limit is 91 to have a bit of wiggle room, but that's it. Now as for the quality settings, um, there's a big controversy on this topic. Uh, I've read people saying that no MSAA 
having it on off and more super sampling looks better but it doesn't you want to have this at least on 2x if you can run it higher do but this combination in my case it looks better if you have it off it'll look chunky and blocky and just ugly so the anisotropic filtering this doesn't really affect performance that much you can run it as high as you like or can so do run it as high as possible now for the ward details this is important because if you set this to low it's gonna limit the amount of obviously details that you can see in the track such as trucks uh, marshals spectators whatever and their quality so this is part of the experience and you wanna at least see some of that to have that you know race car feeling and by taking this performance hit you have to sacrifice on other aspects such as the shadows or reflections now shadows you don't really notice this in VR so you can have it off uh, but if you have a big chunky computer you can run it as high as you want or can so we do uh, smoke generation uh, this will impact performance a bit you don't want to have it too high but if you're drifting and such you have to take this hit run it on maximum but I only do circuit so it doesn't really matter I have it on minimum so I can see it at least now the reflections uh, this is also a big hitter now I run it at the lowest possible and static because it'll give me the best performance and still having a bit of reflections uh, if you can run it higher such as two faces per frame and maybe 512 and 1024 do so because it'll look better but don't go higher than two or three because four five and six faces per frame will just kill your fps the rendering distance doesn't really affect your performance that much you can have it pretty high no problem now to the next one this is a big one post processing um, this will take a really huge hit on FPS somewhere like 10 to 15 sometimes even 20 depending on the filter uh, I avoid it because I can't run them it just kills way too many FPS but if you can if you have that beefy computer uh, you're gonna want to play with these settings the overall quality and clear quality the depth of field doesn't really do anything in game it's just for the replays so yeah try to find your sweet spot between these two also the motion blur make sure it's off this kills FPS also and you don't need it in VR the heat shimmering make sure it's off because it'll make your game look kind of blurry and uh, it's not good for VR same as FXAA it's not used for VR you don't need it so have it off so now that we're done with our default video settings uh, we're gonna hop on custom shaders patch and here we're gonna see uh, the different versions we can choose from uh, you're ideally gonna choose the most stable one which is usually the, the most recent one but I found trouble with the 1.75 so I'm back to the 74 and my game's not crashing and it's running smooth and stable. So now we're gonna go to our general patch settings and we're gonna scroll down a bit. We're gonna find uh, the CPU optimizations and GPU optimizations. We're gonna uncheck this limit shadows and check flatten nodes and optimize meshes some more. These are just CSP configurations to make your system work better. And we're gonna see a lot of random unnecessary effects, which we're gonna turn off because they're pretty unnecessary. It just make your GPU work harder. So these are break disk effects, extra effects, fake shadow effects, turn all of this off, press effects, 
and then lighting effects you can leave it on because it makes lights look really good but uh, we're gonna limit the amount of cars casting light as it says in content manager it's gonna save FPS by limiting this number so try to find a sweet spot uh, this is unrelated but I, I keep this off because it makes the AI, the AI go crazy uh, particle effects if you're drifting again you're gonna want to have this on but I have it off I, I don't really need it uh, reflections effects also off shadow reels off basically all of all of the random effects you find turn them off yeah the last one's tires effects also off and that's pretty much it and for the weather effects we can uncheck all of this under performance tab it's just to make the game run smoother with the weather effects on which you pretty much want to run it on if you want the dynamic weather so that's pretty much it for game configuration settings now we're gonna be overclocking our RAM and GPU this is optional but it will give you a big boost if you're running a low-end PC and you pretty much need it to get those 90 FPS so to overclock our RAM we're gonna access our BIOS and look for the AI tweaker menu or advanced memory settings and we're gonna look for the uh, XMP setting and we're gonna select uh, enable or profile 1 or whatever it says and that'll be it so to overclock our GPU, we're gonna use these two things. It's MSI Afterburner and MSI Combustor. And the first thing you wanna do is go to settings and check this unlock voltage control, then click OK. And we're gonna select our curve voltage to 30% and the power limit, drag it to the maximum, and then run a stress test. Um, you're gonna see how much FPS you're getting and the temperature. Keep that in mind and have it as your baseline. And then as you have it on, you can start adding more core clock, which you will do increments of 50 by 50 until it crashes. Now, when it crashes, uh, you're gonna run the stress test again, but turn your core clock value down to minus 10 of what you had and keep doing it until it's stable and it doesn't crash and then when you have your core clock set you're gonna start doing the same but with the memory clock and that's just it it's that easy your GPU will be overclocked working at its maximum and giving you the best performance also make sure after applying your settings you click on save and select the profile so once that's done you're not gonna have to have afterburner open to have your settings applied it's just gonna run in the background and your GPU will always be overclocked so this is all you needed to know to get the maximum out of your PC for VR sim racing uh, I hope it didn't get too long for you, but it's definitely shorter than googling for hours to get the best settings. If this video helped you improve your gameplay experience, a like and comment is much appreciated. And see you in the next one. Cheers!